Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. It's always true in our natal families that there's a certain chakric orientation. Uh, and that chakric orientation at first determines the way that we look at and evaluate life. In some families, uh, the chakras are very well balanced. And these families have a very um, fluid way of dealing with life. In some families, um, a particular chakra will be predominant. Uh, and in many, in many people uh, in the world today, one of the primary chakras, one of the first three chakras, the gut-brain chakras, are, are dominant. And that is because new souls are always coming onto earth and trying earth life and they need to uh, rise in awareness from from the gut brain into conscious awareness of the higher chakras and this takes time you know at first when a soul um, incarnates uh, as as human on earth they they still have a long train of um, of animal understandings and instincts uh, that predominate in their thought forms. But as time goes on and, and they have many incarnations and much soul learning and continue to to um, associate with other human beings, they realize that they have many more choices in this human form than they would have in an animal form and certainly more so than min mineral or plant form. So, so it takes time. It takes many incarnations to, to, to figure out the user manual for the human body. And all the more so now that the awakening is here because we have many more chakras, we have many more dimensions in all the possibilities of the timelines to learn. And the owner's manual is by request from our, from our spirit guides and our teams. We have to ask. It's not like written on earth in any particular way, although there are plenty of hints along the way. So, so we're born into a family, and let's say, just for example, that the predominant chakra in the family is the third chakra. This is quite commonplace on earth. The third chakra is about willpower, about making one's way in the world. And if a person, a child, is born into a family where uh, the, one of the parents is very strongly third chakra, then the child will grow up either at first, either very strongly third chakra, or very concerned about maintaining his or her own life in the world because they feel there are a lot of pushy people around who are exerting their willpower like that one parent did. So, so, so for that child that was born, in, and, and that is almost very, very many of us, then it becomes a question of learning other ways of self-expression. For example, assertiveness rather than aggression or uh, submission. Okay, so that whole process of learning diplomatic speech and assertiveness and maintaining one's own ground is the uh, one of the sole lessons for children born into families where the third chakra predominates or is, is imbalanced in some way. Um, so there's that. Then um, there's an understanding that needs to be arrived at no matter what... Um, what chakra may predominate in a person's natal family. There's an understanding uh, that needs to be put forth by the light workers to the effect that the chakra that predominates for us completely determines our understanding of the world and further determines the way that the world works for us. For instance, in the third chakra, we have cause and effect. The world of cause and effect. I do something to someone else, I and other. Then I get what I want, like that, right? Or vice versa, someone else does something to us. And 
and we don't get to do what we want. <laughs> so, so what nations try to arrive at, for instance, is that very often, you know, nations use the notion of third chakra in the world, and politics use the notion too as a kind of a give and take situation where we hold our grounds and we put forth. Um, uh, we put forth a strong image before the world so that no one else will try to territorially aggress us or like that, so that we can maintain our own space in the world and live well. You know, same thing for politics. Um, in politics, uh, lots of times a young politician will go into politics with very strong notions of the common good and of what, what they'd like to accomplish for the common good in a term of office. But when they get there, they begin to get their feet wet. They begin to understand this give and take that takes place because many people are in their third chakra, right? So, so the lobbyists want this. The corporations want that. Grassroots people want something else. The churches want something. The schools want something. Everybody, each, each, um, each industrial entity wants something for its, itself or the workers there want something for themselves. Everybody wants something. And so the question becomes one of balancing this against that to arrive as, at, as much in terms of the common good as can be managed during one's term of office. It's a give and take kind of situation. And it can be daunting unless a person feels very um, versatile, very resilient, very capable of compromise and of and of reaching from this to that and weighing the consequences, you know. Now, there's more going on than that in the world and has been up until the time of the shift. Right about the time of the shift in that area, people, many, many people started coming to higher consciousness, to a state of enlightenment, to awareness to awakening and sometimes to a sense of rapture and the joy of a cosmic awareness and the presence of God and Christ consciousness and like that. But getting their toes wet is a great, great millions and millions of people who are beginning to see the way that things have truly been. And and people who are in the third chakra and they start to attain that awareness have not quite reached the level of the fourth chakra, which is essential to a non-causal uh, view of reality. So through the fourth chakra, we attain non-cause and effect uh, weltanschung. The synchronous, uh, the synchronous reality of grace, God's grace showering down on earth and changing things instantaneously. But until we get there, as we go up and down from the third chakra at the navel point to the fourth chakra at the heart, sometimes we're there and sometimes it seems like everything is hopelessly enmeshed in karma, right? And especially if we had that kind of upbringing, where there's a, there's a strong respect for the navel point area and for cause and effect. Even though it's an inferior reality, it was that reality that we cut our teeth on as children. So, to get back to this story, uh, in the last bunch of years, it has become appallingly in the you know, many people observing the play of politics in the United States have come to an understanding that there are astral realities similar to 
the virtual realities of electronics and the much vaunted instruments of war, nanotechnology instruments of war uh, that frighten people who go to the cinema. There are astral equivalents of these that have been in place all these tens of thousands of years during the Age of Darkness. And it's these like astral bots and astral telecommunication, micro telecommunication devices, astral spy like mechanisms, and uh, astral remote viewing and remote control of other people, and all kinds of scary things like that. Astral hypnosis, astral. Um, karmic forcing of people into a particular role that they don't really want to be in, you know. It's astral mind control, you know. And so these things are very similar to the scary movie that the entertainment industry is putting out day after day about, you know, the mass media are coming up with this stuff. And that's because it has an astral reality. Not necessarily a high-tech, like, warrior sort of, you know, corporate and uh, national war application, although there's some crude approximations of this in existence today. Very crude. But the truth of the matter is that the very subtle machines of war, the subtle astral nanotechnology that's really giving us the willies. <laughs> oh, it's giving us the willies now because we noticed it. We call it malware or mind mud or like that, you know, mind slide and all kinds of technologies put in place by superior astral beings negative in the many epochs past. And now we notice it. And now we're freaking out. But it's all over with. You know, it's all over with now. This is the age of the awakening. The beginning of the of the age of light. And so it's only because of that that we're noticing that. It's not that some groups have suddenly taken over like the leadership of our country or of another country or of any groups in the country or of the common man, you and me. It's not like that at all. As you might term it, we have been bored up in, in Star Trek terms, that means we are, our astral forms are cluttered with this malware. And uh, so that makes us, in a way, not human, is seeming not human to ourselves or, or not in control of ourselves. Uh, that's kind of true because Earth School duality is really about that. It's about... It's about losing some part of our free will through making bad decisions and then learning from that and then starting to make good decisions again. If it weren't for the malware, we wouldn't in this have a chance to learn all this stuff. It, what the malware does is it creates the opportunity for us to learn more quickly because it makes every bad decision ten times worse. <laughs> On the other hand, we have the blessing of grace, through the higher realms, through our celestial teams, which are always available, only we have to ask, right? And that makes everything ten times better. We just have to know about it. Well, what sometimes happens when a person, a young person, is born into a family that concentrates on the third chakra, a very strong willpower chakra, is that they don't know that they have the choice to move into their heart space. It seems unsafe. While, on the other hand, the only safety exists in the heart chakra. The, so, so that's a difficult thing that has to be learned, that we have that choice and that we can make that choice and then to su summon the courage, the strength of will to give it a go. And, and this despite that maybe our families are completely on another page, you know. We may have long years of assertiveness attempts before we can actually talk to our families. 
we might have to give that up. In fact, we might have to go to other people that already know about assertiveness and they know about feeling their hearts and following their hearts and having a wonderful life, you know. We might have to let it go. Now I'd like to talk a little about the astral stories that come up during solar events and, and how this relates to choosing a chakra. All right. There are simultaneous astral stories running in the different dimensions of reality. Choosing a chakra is choosing a dimension. Something came up yesterday during the great geostorm that was going on. I was having a wonderful time practicing my, my multidimensional uh, skills and, and doing my best. I remember at first when the solar storms would come up, the astral stories would come up, and I'd be stuck in the third chakra uh, di dimensional realm, in the cause and effect realm, and other people would start these stories about about, you know, uh, that we were at war and that nanotechnology had possessed us all and that we were, we were the mere dupes of, of a shadow government, that the puppet government of, that, that we saw on the, on the newscast was really not true at all and all this, you know. And, and at first I would go along with it. And I would go, oh my gosh, I would get into a state of fear about it, you know. I'd be really scared because I was starting to notice in that dimension, the third dimension, all the constrictions of, of, the, of the realm of cause and effect. I was starting to notice that when a president gets in office, he's saying the senators and the, and the, uh, the representatives of the House, um, any person that gets into office is immediately inundated by lobbying requests and, and put under a great deal of stress, you know, and expected to perform optimally. Even with our greatest prayers, it's difficult for these people, you know. And so we begin to notice this thing. We begin to notice how very compromising a leadership position is because of the fact that we're tempted to slip down in a leadership position into the third chakra, into the realm of control, where it seems like everyone else is. You know, yet we have to lead with our hearts. We have to follow our hearts and lead with our hearts in office. And, and every time uh, our, our elected representatives fall, fall towards the third chakra, they pull many other people in our country into that awareness too. Standalone unit, I, I have to stand up and say, I will follow my heart anyway, you see. And this goes for each of us. We will follow our hearts and we will help our, our leadership and our government to do the same. We will feel that. And, it, and the minute we determine to do that, and it happens, everything changes. Everything changes for everybody on earth. Our leaders, our citizens, the foreign nations, the leaders of those nations, the leaders of every fleet of ships and every airline on earth, every corporation, everything changes. It's that transformational shift that we call multidimensionality or multidiming. Now, <laughs> Now, to get back to my own odyssey along these lines. Uh, so, at first, the solar storms, this was some years back, the solar storms would come, and I would hear these stories about, like, all these dark things, these shadow things going on, right? And I would go, oh, my, I'm in big trouble. My life is in danger, maybe. You know, I better, I better find a safe place to be in all this, you know? And everybody else would be saying the same thing. And a helicopter would come over because there's a helicopter landing pad for like fires and other things over here, often seldom used. But invariably during a solar event, there would be lots of helicopters circling over there. And you can take that any number of different ways, you know. You can take that as, as an ominous sign because the sound of a motor has a tendency to degrade the DNA and to pull down our dimensions lower and lower. And 
And the odd thing is that during solar events, there are lots of motor sounds. It's almost impossible to escape them. It could be a lawnmower. It might be somebody's leaf blower. It might be somebody's, like, air conditioner or their pool motor or outside on the street, somebody running the motor or endless like helicopters circling around or no doubt they would change the flight path to be like directly over your own house. <laughs> There's just a lot of stuff that happens during the solar events. I think it's because these rough sounds are leaving Earth and they need to be heard and transformed through love. But that's another story because when you hear sounds of engines during the solar event, when the air is so charged with protons and so, like, electric, you know, you, it's very easy to become mentally confused, what they call uh, mind mud. Tom Kenyon calls it um, cognitive dissonance that happens during these times of, he terms it chaos, times of chaos that he predicted in around 2005 or 2006 and thereafter. His work is well worth reading. You go to www.tomkenyon.com and check the Hathor archive starting at the, at the earliest ones and then just read on up through today. It's not that many. It's, each one is like a gem. So, so I first found out about it and became like um, um, uh, ready for the notion through Tom Kenyon. And then I started noticing it myself when I became... Uh, electromagnetically hypersensitive, according to what the World Health Organization calls it. I disagree. I think it's electromagnetic um, superconsciousness. But if you call it what the World Health Organization calls it, it's a chance that you'll get time off from work during the, during times when you really need to be off from work as sick leave. There's that. That's a good thing about it. All right, so, so you hear the motor noises, and then cognitive dissonance sets in. And then it's very difficult to remember to feel your heart, and you're back down in your lower chakras, fight-or-flight response like that. You're trying to figure out whether some, like, uh, what's it called, guerrilla scenario is, to, is a country being invaded. These are the things that come up and go through your mind if you're down there in the negative uh, gut brain, right? Am I safe? Do I need to flee? Do I need to like go go to sleep? What do I need to do? And so, do I need to turn on the news? And this is just because there's a helicopter floating around out there. <laughs> and everybody else, you can hear the astral stories on the astral plane. They're like, they're like ready to freak out, you know, also because they're going through mind mud and cognitive dissonance. So at first I used to yeah, I'd be just sitting rocking in a rocking chair, but my thoughts would like be careening kind of wildly around, you know, unless I took some kind of, you know, calm me down uh, tea or something. But as time went on, I began to distinguish between the chakras and the dimensions and and yet things would happen that were repeats of the old and I would be able to navigate up to the heart chakra. A good example was like yesterday. Yesterday, I was standing outside. I was doing my yard work because the protons were flying and falling everywhere. And I had my mud and cognitive dissonance. And the, and the solar event had been in effect for like a couple of days. An incredibly terrific uh, geostorm was going on. And so I was outside doing the, um, doing the gardening. And the helicopters started up again, right? One after another, flying over right, right near here, flying and flying, circling, it seemed, and going around. And, and the flight path changed for the high jets. You know, they started going over the overhead, too. And I remembered the other times, you know. And I could hear people in the neighborhood creating stories about all the stuff that, that had been thought of before. But by keeping my attention on my heart, I came to the conclusion this was the same as the other times <coughs> when nothing bad had happened. 
Nothing bad had happened then. This was a chance to absorb these, these heavy energies coming from the sound of the engines into my heart and transform them with love. And when I did that, it helped everyone who was listening in, everyone around here who was listening in, to achieve a more positive emotional frame of mind too. So, so that's the difference. That's the difference between the navel point and the heart, is the ability to ride through our fears and to move on to, to an understanding that, that God is always with us, grace is always with us, abounding, no matter what. You know, This is just an illusion, and it's up to us to flavor it with positive emotions or negative emotions. If positive, then we rise in feeling to the heaven worlds. If negative, we can sink to the very lowest hell worlds. <laughs> it's completely up to us. Yeah, but, but definitely expect the unexpected during solar events. And, and go with the flow, you know. Ride with the, ride with the waves and, and enjoy it. It's, it's kind of cool. Very unexpected things happen. So the interesting thing about the dimensions is that it, as we experience one dimension, the third dimension, uh, we may actually see actions and acting out in the world that support that third dimension, null activity. For example, you know, a bunch of berserker actions out in the world or, or like that. We may see those things happen. Um, uh, and that is because we've hooked into a dimension where those things are possible. Yet we can take the same set of sensory phenomena and, and transform our awareness to the heart chakra. And for us, that causal um, net or uh, trap that other people are in, how many people feel that they can control other people, how they feel they have everything tied up, you know, how they, how the dare down operates, how the, you know, how the game of chicken is, how we can have our way and be above the law and all these things that people believe when they practice the third chakra um, energies and that manifest in their reality because of it are completely transformed through feeling the heart. A person standing right beside me and experiencing all the helicopters going over might be experiencing a completely different reality because of their feeling of fear. And they might step away from me and into some action that perpetuates that notion that fear is true, yet it is not. Only love is true. And the closer our feeling is to love, the more truthful will be our hologram and, uh, and our illusion, and the more we will draw to ourselves those who have the same truthful representation of all that is. You see? Uh, I hope I've explained this adequately. So there's one way to look at people... The people who, who noticed what was going on with those, with the power games in, amongst the leadership in world government in the last 10 years and who were associating with um, other people also in the third chakra. And this includes black magic practitioners because lots of times when people are stuck in the third chakra, they figure they have no choice against all of the bad things that are happening in the world other than to try to be stronger by practicing black magic. Now, black magic only pulls them down further into that illusion, you see. Um, black magic is not strong like angelic realm is strong. No way. Not one one thousandth or ten thousandth as strong as the angelic realm. We can always call on that and bring in the fourth dimension.
So, but anyway, many people in the last 10 years started to feel, because they first noticed it, they in, n noticed the, the blinkers and the muffling and the um, bindings and um, um, imprisonment of karmic-like forces that wreaks control over those who seek power, and and they associated with others who were uh, who were sensing life through their third chakra, and some of those others are always eager to say that it is they who are creating those. Um, those bonds on the leadership of the world. It is they who are the power behind the power. They are the controllers of earth, right? They have the master plan and they are making everything happen, right? And if we too are perceiving everything from our third chakra, we believe this. It's easy to believe. They look pretty scary. They seem pretty scary. They say that they've done 700 or 900 or Lord knows how many murders in their lifetimes. And, and you know, in a state of fear, we believe these things. <laughs> we do. Yeah. And But in a state of feeling the heart, we see that none of this is true. None. Completely untrue. <laughs> same way in the astral stories if there's someone that we feel to have power or authority over us for whatever reason someone that we know uh, that, that we just can't seem to deal with on an equal footing it's likely especially during a solar event that the astral stories that come up around helicopters and like that are going to feature that person as the controller, right? But in fact, there is no controller. There are just a lot of people that believe that they control things, which is lucky. It's lucky because first, we are noticing the constrictions on those in power. We are noticing the problems of 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 how power, the desire for power, rips uh, power from us. We're, we're noticing how black mag diminishes the electromagnetic field, and we're finally realizing that that's not the way, you know. So we've taken a great step forward. But, but it seems like suddenly everything is hopeless, and suddenly there are psychic wars and there are mind control experts and there are controllers everywhere and all this stuff is going on, but it's been going on all this time. We just didn't know it. <laughs> so now we do. That's terrific. Really terrific. Congratulations. Congratulations to each of us. So one of the power buzzwords that people use on the astral plane when they're into the third chakra game is they'll find some agency on earth that seems impregnable and unassailable. Like a secret service organization, for instance. Now you and I both know, having read WikiHow, that, that there's nothing more popular on earth today than presenting a, a secret service identification card to a policeman and telling him that that's the reason that we killed somebody or that we robbed a bank or like that is because we're in the secret service. And this, this secret service badge is completely fake, you know. And so this is, a, this is a very popular con game these days. And the same taste is true on the astral plane. There's a whole, like, shadow game going on with regard to the... The Secret Service, all the Secret Service, Homeland Security, CIA, Interpol, uh, FBI, all that's maybe all the foreign ones too. And let's see, there may be other, oh, the State Department. Mm. Um, yeah, anything that strikes, oh, the Internal Revenue Service, anything that strikes fear into the heart of the average American is featured on the astral stories as if the person, the one person in the world, or two or four, that we most think of as the impregnable, unassailable uh, controllers of our existence, we're in charge of those organizations. It's just another example of the, of the, um, of the shell game with the uh, fake uh, uh, Secret Service identification card, except that this person that we're kind of concerned about and afraid of right, is, is saying suddenly that they're, that they're 
a CIA agent or that they've called the IRS or that they or that they they know the head of the State Department or that or that they have they have drones that they can employ against us and tomorrow we're gonna be, you know, out of existence or like that. Like right. Like the government is concerned about us. <laughs> I saw this movie one time about um it's called The Last Avatar. It's very cool. And it's about this very experience of rising above fears engendered by the control, uh, set, the naval point notions of, of, of fight or flight and control and, and being controlled. It's, it's rising past that into the heart chakra. And there's this great scene in it about, um, you can get it from Amazon.com. It has this great scene about the guy is about to be proclaim his truth to the world about all these great things that are actually so in the higher dimensions. And and he's chased by a bunch of, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, gendarme guerrilla people, like uh, men of war, you know, what do you, mercenaries, that's it. And he's chased and chased, and he just makes it into the broadcasting booth and, and proclaims his truth, and then the, the movie ends. And it's that kind of feeling when you're rising from fear of, of the third chakra into the heart chakra is you can do it. You can make it. And it's a whole new separate world where you can speak your truth freely, where you can follow your heart. When all of the liberties are written down in the uh, Constitution of the United States are yours for the taking. <laughs> so that's my pep talk. Talk to y'all later. Love you lots.